that was weird. Hey everybody, this is Carmen, your Divine Synergist of Heart's Joy. Thanks for joining. Um, so some of you have asked about uh, the current energies, about the retrogrades, um, about what the heck is going on and how to work with these energies. And so my good friend, friend Jean, um, hello Jean. Hey. Uh, she and I thought we, it would be fun to riff together um, and let's just have a conversation about what does this look like um, until, I don't know, probably September, the energies. Um, we're going to focus on retrogrades. We're going to focus on, um, we're going to touch on eclipses and whatever else spirit would like for us to talk about today. So I'm just, you know what, Jean is just going to ask a bunch of questions and I'm going to do my best to answer them. So fire away, girl. All right. I think that everyone has a lot of questions about what's going on because it's just, there's so many planets going retrograde all at once. So I think it's just important to ask questions about like, you know, what, what we should be focusing on. Like, what does this really mean? And it's just ironic when you look into the planets and what they mean like and the timing of where we're at in the world so let's start with um the first planet that went retrograde which was pluto so when did that go and what what does that mean and what should we expect from that okay and if you don't mind i do want to talk a little bit about um so for those of you who are new who don't actually understand what retrograde is let me touch on that real quick so Retrograde is really just an optical illusion. So the planet truly is not moving backwards. It's just moving so quickly forward that it appears to be moving backwards. So think of it if you're sitting on a train and you're passing a car, the train is going at such a top speed that it almost looks like the car is going backwards. So, um, cause there's a lot of misunderstanding about that. Um, and retrogrades in general will take us back over old ground. So it's a really good time to review, reevaluate. Um, really, retrogrades, I feel like in general, get a bad rap. <clears throat> and they're a really good time to um, have second chances. So Pluto, I'm going to get my info up in front of me here. Pluto is actually... And, and you guys keep this in mind, like Jean had mentioned, because it's quarantine time. So Pluto is actually the planet that will <clears throat> destroy and rebuild us from a distance. And that could, that's, it's going to shake our foundations. Um, it uh, can feel crippling. Um, there's a lot of um, power. So it's a destruction of power um think of it too as a spiritual foundation so it it um it's going to help build that spiritual foundation because it's a ground zero for an awakening so think of it as like a, a a death rebirth so you know we just had easter i don't know a month ago roughly um and think of it as a quarantine time too and that's one of the reasons why i believe that we're experiencing this quarantine time especially in 2020 because 2020 is all about clear vision and seeing things cl clearly and i feel like pluto is helping us to do that by bringing it to the forefront of us is is what you're doing really working in life <clears throat> is you know kind of like you know we've talked about relationships and we'll talk about that with venus here in a minute but like what's really working with your relationships and this is our time to go within and you're going to hear us talk a lot about that i think today because <laughs> uh, that court you know it's almost like i feel like <clears throat> god said y'all need to be put in time out <laughs> <laughs> that's Here's that's very true especially as we start getting into like what what all of these planets mean and what what we should be looking for in each retrograde it is almost like we're all in time out and we're being called to just evaluate ourselves and our communication and relationships with others because it's almost like we've been lacking all of that for so long now that it's like oh stop 
now you guys have to sit down and go in and really think about, you know, how, how do you want to show up in the world or how do you want to, to be like, you need to align with your, your true self. So. And actually that's a part of Pluto too. So yeah, that impacts your, sh so you'll hear people call it your shadow side. Um, or those things that you don't want anybody to see. It's kind of like, you know that they're there, but maybe you don't want to deal with them. And so this is a time of self-examination. Um, a lot, I've heard people call it personal responsibility. I just call it responsibility in general. Um, and it's time we get a chance to self-analyze um, what are our passions? Um, and purpose and what am I doing here on earth which I feel like a lot of people are doing in quarantine time that's what people do during live on purpose course you've taken the course you know what it's all about um, Pluto and and by the way the dates for Pluto so it it are um, April 25th through October 4th it's our biggest one maybe not biggest is the right word it's the longest one that we have this year um, forgive yourself love yourself, um, get rid of that toxicity, that toxic energy. And you'll notice too the themes and how they're all woven through each of these, which by the way, I believe is not a um, coincidence that they've all gone retrograde at this you know, time. Um, and this retrograde just gives us another chance to, to go inward and to look at ourselves that way. So that's, I hope that helps with Pluto, makes a little bit of sense. It's the planets that that is furthest away from us, so. And like with Pluto too, this is also, since it is like about, you know, destruction and your foundation and all that, is this is a really good time, don't you think, to work on just your foundation of, you know, who you want to be? And I think a good question to ask is, am I in alignment with my soul's purpose? Mm -hmm. And most people don't even know what that is. Yeah. So, but I think we can get more into that when we start getting into what some of these other planets are. So the next one, let's talk about, let's talk about Saturn. So Saturn went retrograde after Pluto. So what, what can we expect and what, what does Saturn being retrograde mean for all of us? Okay. Saturn, by the way, I'm going to, wherever we put this video, um, I'll make sure that you guys have access to my website because I've got um, audio or audio calendars. <laughs> Jesus. Calendar people can download. So you always have these dates. So Saturn is May 11th through September 29th. And um, so Saturn is a social planet and it's um, what are you contributing to society? Um, it's also focused about your karma. So it's think about things that, that you have, how you've shown up. You guys hear me talk about that a lot. So how you show up is what you're gonna receive back. Um, so, and it also impacts the timing of that karma, um, which is really gonna play into the rest of these as well. Um, Saturn, <sighs> There's, again, a lot of, um, <laughs> they, it plays bad cop. Well, it, I would it, say, too, does it necessarily play bad cop, or is it a little bit of both? It's like whatever karmatic debt you have, whether it be good or bad, like this is the time where it's going to come out. So if you, if you have good karma and you have a lot of it, this is going to be a good time for you. Well, so when I say it plays at bad cop, it's because Jupiter, which is what we're going to talk about next, plays good cop. Okay. So Saturn is is kind of like, um, trying to figure out how to explain this, um, making sure that we're being responsible, putting in the work, cleaning house. Um, it goes back to that personal responsibility. Um, it's the reality. Um, it's almost like the reality, the karma reality is in your face. It's structure. Um, so keep in mind, you've got Pluto that's wanting to destroy, and then you've got the work. So work you contribute to society, um, and then the karma of Saturn. Um, we get a break 
from new lessons and we're basically revisiting the old the old ones and i feel like that's where the karma piece comes into play if that makes sense um so if there's something that you want to rebuild um and it could be relationships because you know we'll eventually talk about venus um then you get a chance to rebuild it and it's almost like i i feel like you you it's almost like you get a taste of what you created of the seeds that you planted and you don't like it so it gives you a chance to do it differently does that make it's sense it, yeah it's, it's like a chance to stop reflect stop. on reflect on what's working and then re-strategize and then and plant your seeds or build that foundation up again that that has you've essentially knocked down so it's a good time to stop reflect re-strategize and then be open and ready when it's when it's all over yep and and think about were there any lessons like for me there were a couple of lessons that I finally learned them a few months ago and it's and so I don't get I don't have to revisit those again but if there are any lessons that you realize oh I haven't learned them yet or you wondered if you'd learn them or not they're gonna come up those lessons are gonna come back up and I think it's important to to point out like these lessons like we're we're here to learn them and um, you know and to have them we learn them and then we need to just learn how to let go of things so i mean you you might think that you are let you have let go of something but you haven't so it's going to keep coming back up in every retrograde until you learn your lesson and you let it go and the lessons get louder and louder larger and larger worse and worse as we all know mm -hmm. uh, and by the way a lot of why i even bring up or talk about the astrology piece and the teachings that I do is one, I just want people to understand what's happening um, and how it impacts you because you can work with it. You can align with it. And I do a lot of journaling. So if there's lessons that are coming up for you, get it, write it down on paper, just like get it out of your head, out of your body, because if you don't, that gets stuck in your body. And then that's a whole nother conversation, you know? Yeah. And then I, I would say too, is it a good time for us to always be asking like, what, what am I supposed to learn from this? Like how, how, how is this going to help me move forward? And those are good things to ask. Um, even if you don't believe in any of this, because you know, if, if something's going on and you're noticing energetically that you're off, it's always a good time to go within and say, okay, well, what, what am I, supposed to learn from this like how is this going to help me move forward yep always always retrograde or not i say yes to that <laughs> i think so too um so the next one that went retrograde was venus yeah venus uh may 13th through june 25th um so and and I and I want to say I think that Venus is the one that a lot of people are really focused on right now because Venus doesn't go retrograde very often, correct? Correct. Eight every eighteen months. And it is also the one that is focused on relationships and our finances. So and I think that those are like the two things that everybody always wants to know about their love life and money. So I'll let you explain more about Venus retrograde. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they always want to know that, um, especially during angel card readings. That's typically the questions I get. Um, and I apologize, you may hear my cat in the background. Um, yeah, so Venus is about relationships and money. And the key with the relationships is it doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic relationship. It's about any any relationship it can be friendships and i feel like if you take it back to quarantine time um have you noticed that that those relationships have shifted that you've shifted because here's the thing we're all energy and so as we shift and we come to our own you know awakening then that's also going to shift who we hang out with so whether it's friends or um uh true partnerships romantic partnerships 
uh, business relationships, business to business, everything gets a chance to shift. It doesn't have to, and it, and it can, and it's, you know, I don't know if you guys are having thoughts or dreams. Dreams are one of the ways that angels talk to you dreams about, um, like old, old, uh, relationships or exes or any of that. Um, if an ex has come back in your life, um, even an ex friend, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be like an ex partner. Um, and to that, you guys will typically hear me say like, it could be that they need closure. I mean, you just don't know, right? That'll ha that happens a lot during Mercury retrograde, which we'll talk about. Um, so yeah, relationships, money. Um, it is self-worth. Um, it is your self-esteem, um, pleasure. Um, it also impacts harmony, which is one of my favorite words. Um, art. I feel like the art industry has really kind of um, taken a hit in a way with this uh, quarantine um, because everything used to be live and it's not, there's nothing live anymore. Um, it's, I don't know if you can hear her, man. She is just very adamant this morning. Ella. She wants to talk about it too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so for for anybody who is um curious about venus retrograde you get a chance retrogrades are always second chances and life in general is all in how you look at it um so if you think that you know re any retrograde is going to be bad it's going to be bad if you think it's going to be great it's a time for me to work on things or work through things whatever then that's what you're going to experience. Um, gratitude is keeping a gratitude journal, um, appreciation journal, whatever you want to call it, is very important during this time, um, during Venus retrograde. Because, and those of you who have my journal, you know, I have you guys write down what are three things you love and value about yourself every night, three things that you are thankful for every night. There's a reason why. Those are more important now than ever during what is it two months that we have it's about a month uh, a little over a month during this venus, venus retrograde for sure i think that this is definitely like with this retrograde it's a time to really focus on um just your what your what do you put into your relationships and how, how, you know, how do you show up in your relationships and really reflect on how do you show love to other people? And, you know, is that being reciprocated to you? Like, are, are you getting the same thing back that you're giving? And also, you know, if you're not like, that's a good time to really like stop and, and think about like, you know, your relationship with, that person and it doesn't matter if it's a romantic relationship it could be a friendship it could be a family member it, you know it could be anything so and, and and I think this is a good time to to you know to learn about like how am I communicating in my relationship like it's all about your communication too so and even more so when mercury goes yeah and I think a, a really good thing is we 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 tend to lack like our relationship with ourself. So I think that that this is a good time to focus on just giving yourself that self-love that you normally wouldn't give yourself. And great point. One thing that, so a lot of times is we're looking for evidence of, so we're looking for evidence of whatever that self-worth is that I'm validated. So it's different for everybody. And so when you can show yourself the evidence, and what I mean by that is when you can keep one promise to yourself, there's something you're going to do. And a lot of times when you say like self-care, I feel like people think, oh, I get my nails done or I go to the spa day. Okay. It's that. And that's the and conversation. Yeah. And so, you know, yes, getting up an hour early before the kids get up and meditating or journaling or taking a bubble bath or what the frick ever meditating. It doesn't matter. Um, I have a morning routine where I chant, I meditate, I journal, I do some stretching. And so, and there's a reason for that. And, and as long as you can keep these small promises to yourself every single day, then you can build 
build upon them. Then you're showing yourself evidence that you can do it, that you are being successful. And it can work in reverse as well, you know, where you can show yourself the evidence that, oh, you know, this isn't working, basically. Yeah. And for the self-love, self-care piece, my biggest thing is, what's one promise that you can keep to yourself, even if it's going to bed by a certain time or turning off your phone or. Or even if you need a nap in the middle of the day from homeschooling your children, like that's a good, you know, just something where you're going and you're you're by yourself and you're, you know, reflecting, even if it's just a nap. Yep. Absolutely. Good point. (laughs) I took a nap yesterday and I did not feel guilty about it at all. I will say, I, I think every day after I finish helping the kids with their schooling, I have quiet time and they know that I have quiet time. I have to go and I have to sit in my room and I get my grounding mat out and I put my feet on it and I lay down on the ground and I just sit there and it has to be quiet for at least 30 minutes every day. So it's perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, let's, let's move on. Let's talk about Jupiter. What can we expect from Jupiter and um, what should, what should we focus on? And like, what, what does that really mean for us? So, and Jupiter, by the way, as far as size of planets, it's the largest one. So it is um, expansion, um, increase. And sometimes when I say that people think it's going to expand like good, good and, and expand for their benefit, of course, everything's for your benefit. It just means an expansion. So keep in mind, whatever you focus on or whatever you're planting, whatever seed you're planting, that's what's, that's what it's going to expand. Um, so if you're literally in a scarcity mindset, it's just going to expand that scarcity mindset, which is why um, you probably heard that a lot of people are manifesting really quick right now. Mm-hmm. Probably why? Um, so it impacts religion, beliefs, um, potentially your political affiliations. Um, so it's literally an expansion, optimism. It's the big picture thinking. So it does play good cop. Um, it also impacts abundance, faith, wisdom, um, growth, um, So I feel like you guys are starting to hear or see the the theme that we have with these. And I feel like it's very interesting how they're all going at the same time. And didn't you also bring up um, something about we had something similar happen during a lot, another plague? How many years? Yeah, I read something that, and and I don't remember which plague it was, but the last time that all these planets were retrograde at the same time and kind of the same alignment that we're in was um, in the 1700s, I believe. I'm I'm not, I'm not, don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure, but it was ironically during another plague. And I think that it's interesting just kind of the timing of all of this because we are in a pandemic right now and nobody is really sure of what's happening, what's going to happen, like, you know, and, and I think it's interesting because we have like our foundation, we have working on our communication, our relationships, go like turning inward, like working on ourselves, like aligning with ourselves, growing, expanding, and it's like, you know what we're we're in this you know pandemic right now like it's kind of ironic that all of these planets are retrograde at the the time that we're all you know like you know stuck in our houses and you know we've been put kinda, in time out yeah we've been put in time out for a reason yeah and and, and i want to say that um i think it's for good reason and um deal with it not saying that to you just people anybody who's listening or watching this later like i think that this is like instead of like this is the time where we make the most of this situation and it's like 
you know, one of the, one of the, the questions, some of the questions that keep sticking out to me and I've had other people say them to me and it's some things that I'm like asking myself daily, like, am I clear? Am I aligned with my true purpose? How am I showing up to the world? You know, those, those are all, all questions that, you know, we should, we should work on. Like, how am I showing up in my relationships? Like, so really you could ask yourself and this is actually in the monthly check-in of the daily journal which is are my actions in alignment in alignment with my values because if they aren't then you aren't taking responsibility and that's going to come up during this time as well Um, and that's like this is a good time to work on those things yep yep. so so quick recap before we because then we're going to talk about mercury right yeah so um so these are personal responsibility, abundance, self-responsibility, self-love, relationships, karma, um, some communication, um, and your work as well. I mean, it, any work and life lessons, that could be your shadow side. To me, that's, I call it my shadow side. So. And I think, oh, another good thing to touch on um, that you pointed out to me is if you do have any just like old memories or old beliefs that are coming up, this is a good time to clear those out. Like, it's like, are we, we clearing out the closet? Like, let's clean, clean out everything and get rid of it. And if it doesn't serve us, it's got to go. And you know what, to your point, everybody cleaned out their physical closets during quarantine. Now it's time for the personal. It's time for the spiritual. Yeah. So I, I, I want to throw this in there too, when we talk about the spiritual side, because the, from an energy standpoint back in June, so literally June, so it'll be almost a year ago, this June that we started to experience what they call a fifth dimensional energy. So we went from a third dimensional energy to a fifth dimensional energy. And so that's just magnifying everything right now. Um, for those of you who are curious about the energy piece, you know, um, keep following me It's stuff. It's, it's basically the focus, um, and the Schumann resonance. So, and I don't know how familiar Jean you are with the Schumann resonance. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the earth's heartbeat and it used to go, it used to beat really low. And ever since we got fifth dimensional energy, it's, it's like up and down, up, down, up, down. And it's spiking. Was it a week or two ago? It was at 91. Oh, wow. And, and that's the stuff I want people to understand is this is all impacting us. That Schumann resonance, that energy is impacting all of us. You know, the new moons and full moons are impacting us. Um, and they impact us differently depending on what, what sign they're in and the fact that all these planets are retrograde right now too. So... So basically how we started this month in May is not how you're going to experience yourself at the end of, um, I would say July or at the end of, um, September, October for sure. But just be open and ready for whatever's on the other side of that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you want to hit my favorite one here now? Okay, you're, you're a little bit better at Mercury retrograde than I am, but I I think this is the one that Mercury goes retrograde the most, and it tends to be the time when everybody, if anything can go wrong, it does go wrong. It likes to, likes to play tricks on us and, you know, really, (laughs) really uh, get everybody up in a a good stir. So I'll let you kind of touch on that. Like, what, what can we focus on and what should we be learning from retrograde yep okay so mercury goes retrograde three minimum three sometimes four times a year and you guys part of the reason why is because it's the closest one to to um to oh my god i can't even think the um sun so it is a messenger um, and it impacts our communication, um, travel, technology, transportation, um, electronics. So the myth used to be don't sign a contract in Mercury retrograde. And to that, I say, no, just know it's going to be flexible. So it's a great time for you to, um, if you're an entrepreneur, to update your website and then launch that update after Mercury retrograde. Um, 
because because it's again you're reviewing you're redoing it's a good time to you know you could even be creating a course or whatever it is in the background um just know that if you do sign any documents that it's going to be fluid i did sign a document um in a retrograde mercury retrograde in december of 2017 and that was actually the best thing i ever did had the best outcome ever um, I have been dumped in a mercury retrograde. I've been fired in a mercury retrograde. And to me, none of those are bad things. At those all. are all things that end up being for the better. It just, you know, it's, 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 uh, ironic the way that things work out because while we do have tend to have things that we view as not being good happen in mercury retrograde, it ends out always being for a greater good. Absolutely. So, and those dates are June 18th through July 12th. So, and every planet, by the way, has a, what they call a pre-shadow and a post-shadow. I only typically focus on those dates, though, during Mercury retrograde, and here's why. Um, and, and the pre-shadow date starts June 2nd. So, starting June 2nd up until the, the June 18th, um, I do journaling. And I'm gonna share with you questions that I actually got from somebody else. Um, her name's Elizabeth Peru. And um, I'll just tell you guys what the questions are right now. Um, you're gonna ask yourself during the pre-shadow phase, who pops into my life? Um, what or whom am I thinking about? What major dealings are each day? Um, what new projects are you focused on? Um, what are you uncertain about? who comes back from your past, what old issue or issues are not going away. And then, oh, and then I wait and answer this one at the end of it, which is what's the message for me. And I also look up, this is my journal from the last retro, Mercury retrograde. I also look up to see what sign it's in as well. And um, I got a book by uh, Yasmin Bolin that she co-wrote with somebody for uh, Mercury retrograde in general. And when you get that book, then you can start to work with what sign it's in too. These journal prompts though, when you journal on them, so then I've got all my journaling in here, you're gonna know what to expect during the actual Mercury retrograde itself. Instead of, oh, this is horrible and, you know, back up your computer, be responsible. <laughs> but and I, think, I think it's a good time, like I know that you know, during retrograde, when something does happen, I always kind of giggle to myself and I'm like, I knew that I should have double checked that, or I knew that, you know, this should have happened. And, and, um, I think that it was interesting. One time we were, we were planning something and all of our deliveries kept coming in late. So I, you know, told my wonderful fiance, I was like, Hey, we need to make sure we're ordering stuff, you know, in advance because that, it's going to come late. And he's like, well, how do you know? I'm like, well, I just have a feeling. And it was because we were in a retrograde. So I knew that things, communication was going to be off. Timing was going to be off. And it's just, so, it's little things like that preparing for. And it's like, yeah, we know our technology is going to, you know, something's going to happen. Make sure you're, you're backing things up. You're double checking things. Like the thing with, I think doing contracts in a retrograde, it's not a bad thing. Just be flexible and make sure you're double checking because that, that could cause an issue for you later. It doesn't necessarily mean anything bad. I think that retrograde, I think that sometimes we become a little bit lazy when we're doing things and retrograde really puts us like in check and it's like, nope, you need to double check that. You need to make sure you're paying attention. Yeah, so absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. To all of that. <laughs> and, um, you know, I posted out on so social media on my personal page, like I haven't been sleeping well this week and I know per me personally, everybody's different. It's part of the, the shifts of the energy. And again, your energies, your body's just aligning. So by the way, when you are going through, um, shifts, personal shifts, through an awakening, whatever you want to call it, of source, your body is the last to shift. Everything else shifts first, and then your physical body is the last to shift. So don't get frustrated with yourself. And um, I forget, we talked about ruling planets. My ruling planet, I'm Pisces, is Neptune. I actually have two. I think the other one's Venus. I can't remember. I got to look. Um, 
So no two, find out that information. What did you say yours was, Jean? Uh, I'm a Capricorn and mine is Saturn. And so that's probably why, why you felt a little wonky this week. Because yeah, I've, I've had, a, I've noticed that this week I've had um, anxiety really, really bad. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not as in tune with it when we do shift into retrogrades, but it's been ironic because I didn't know that Saturn, you know, was the ruling planet of Capricorn until <laughs> I looked it up yesterday and I was like, that's why I've been having panic attacks. That actually makes a lot of sense now. So. Yep. It's amazing what happens when um, we have information. Like yeah. That. Yeah. Um, and before I forget, Mercury, the post-shadow period goes through July 26th. So basically from July 12th to July 26th is, it's, the post-shadow period is a time to tie up any loose ends. Anything that, that uh, needs to happen that didn't happen during the Mercury retrograde time. And let's point this out. If you're still holding on to those things, they will come back in the next one. So, Absolutely. you know, I think that, you know, people think, oh, you know, I'm going to partially do this or I'm going to, you know, no, 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 no. That's not, that's not how it works. It's going to come back. So let's, you know, if we're all, we've all like been doing our housework around here and cleaning stuff out. It's just time to, you know, get, get everything cleaned out to finish the rest of this year, you know, with, you know, being in our true alignment. So, so I want to speak into just eclipses in general real quick, because it actually speaks to what you just said. Um, the oh you guys i have two cats and the other one's getting ready to come in the room <laughs> is this okay my kids are starting to wake up now so we're probably gonna see one of them come in here at some point <laughs> <laughs> okay so we're y'all we're getting ready for um three eclipses uh june july um and eclipses basically come in and disrupt the status quo so the reason why i wanted to bring it up now is because to your point if you don't take care of it um it's going to keep coming up for you oh and by the way the eclipses this summer are going to take care of it for you so um they disrupt the, the status quo they change timetables um sometimes you'll feel like a timetable just jumped like very quickly and you're like what the hell just happened that's why um and it's a push of a reset button and literally it is the strongest it's a very dramatic tool that the universe has in order to create rapid change and progress um and i want to talk about that a little bit with the pandemic because you and i've gone back and forth since i think january well maybe february about when we think we're going to be out of quarantine and i gotta say i think it's going to be in and out all year um, it's definitely, we, y'all, we're getting a new earth. I've been talking about this in my videos for a few weeks now. Um, and so that's why I feel like these retrogrades are so perfect because they give us the time to reflect and go within while we're in quarantine time. Y'all trust me. I miss my Mexican restaurants. I miss all my <laughs> people. I'm not saying that. I, I'm just saying that you ask yourself and and the retrogrades are giving you the chance to ask yourself what is this going to look like on the outside to the point where i bought a sketchbook and i'm sketching in there um what i want my life to look like on the outside of this because the eclipses are going to take care of whatever it is it doesn't matter it could be a relationship it could be karma finance it does not matter whereas the planets are really specific eclipse is just nope like it's a hell yes or a hell no, basically. <laughs> Staying or going. And I say, um, let's do another video later and we can talk about like the in depth stuff um, when we get closer to time. Just know that I feel like, what did you say? July? Was it July you said you think it'll be? I, so I said, remember at the beginning, I said, we're going to start. So, there's we're gonna start opening up in may and I, and everybody kept telling me no 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 and i was like no it's gonna be it's gonna be may but it's gonna be a slow process and then and then i said july will be pretty much like somewhat more back to normal but since i think july the end of july is 
uh, definitely will be back to where we were somewhat like our new it'll be like our new normal Normal. so and i think that's about right because of the eclipses Mm -hmm. i almost feel like the eclipses are going to come in at a time um so the eclipses start while we're still in mercury retrograde (laughs) uh and let me look at the dates here venus will still be in retrograde they'll yeah. all still be in retrograde they'll all still be in retrograde so, so i mean it it really is i mean i think it's it's ironic to me because like you said the eclipses are going to get rid of it whether you want to or not i think sometimes it's it's um easier to be in the flow and and um work on it and work with the energy instead of working against it because you're going to find that when you're you're in the flow and in alignment that it those things are a lot easier and you're really gonna be able to to work with the energy instead of against it yep so and it's gonna happen whether you want it to or not i mean do you want it do you would you rather it be easy or do you want like to learn things the hard way you know It's so interesting you say that because I was just explaining this to somebody earlier this week about control because it basically boils down to control. Yeah. And think of it, you're trying to hold wet soap in your hand. And so the tighter you grip to the wet soap to have control over it, to keep it in your hand, it's going to just slip right out. Versus you just kind of allowing it to sit there and letting go enough for it to be there in the palm of your hand. And hold on, let's point this out too. It doesn't matter whether you think you have control or you want control, you know, spirit's going to take over and take control anyways. So I, I think that's another good thing. It's like, sometimes you just have to, it's easier to let go and be in the flow of things instead of working um, against it. Because when you're in the flow, that's when you're really going to learn what it is that you know, your guides and your angels and everyone and spirit is trying to show you. And it's, you're a lot, you're more receptive to all those good things that are going to come out at the end of that. Absolutely. Girl, this has been fun. What else should I talk about? (laughs) (laughs) I think we should do like a poll and ask people like, what, what is it that, what do you want to hear us talk about? You know? Okay. We can do that. So I'll I'll definitely post this on YouTube. We're still recording. I'll definitely post this on YouTube and you know, we can send it to all the social media outlets and just put in the comments or message us and let us know. Um, what, what would you like the focus to be next time? Um, you know, I think, so I think a good one for us to talk about, because you were talking about the 5D shift, let's, let's talk about that, because, you know, like, since I'm still kind of going through my awakening, and, like, people think it's, like, a boom, it's, like, no, 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 this lasts for months, like, you know, there's, so, and because I'm still, you know, going through mine, where I'm shifting from that, you know, more into that 5d so i'm seeing things differently i think that this is like we should do one about that okay let's do it and so. i would almost say that it's a year i mean it's it can be years yeah for a process and that's where the eclipses also can come into play too because it can throw you into one and it can also speed you up in it and that'll kind of jack with you a little bit too if you don't quite understand that time really doesn't exist and so um it's a man-made construct just yeah. like this man-made construct um and i feel like those are very um good things to point out to people when it's man-made versus you know spirit-led spirits you're flowing um no the pro in fact i just saw a video on TikTok. i think it was yesterday where everybody thinks that it's like this and it's a smooth ride going up and it's not it's a zigzag did you see have you seen that one oh, i gotta find this i saw the funniest like spiritual awakening video and it's this guy and he's like 
you know, talking to himself in the mirror and he's like, who are you? And he's like, I don't know who the F are you? <laughs> and, and he's like, well, I don't know. Like now I'm so confused. I mean, you have to see it cause you'll be like dying laughing. Cause like the other side of him is like cussing him out. Like, I don't know. You called me here. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. I cannot tell you how many times I've looked in the mirror and said, I don't know what this person's supposed to look like. So I don't. It's really funny because I keep hearing, like, you've said it to me several times, and then I keep hearing it from other people, and I, so I keep hearing, like, take the mask off. So now every time I'm like, see, I just see that mask, like, coming off. And it's funny because I've been, like, really focused on, like, you know, how, how am I showing up, like, with my kids and with, you know, my family and with my friends and really, like, trying to take that mask off and, you know, be more of who I'm supposed to be versus who I was made to be, you know? It's who you already are. It's your, divine, yeah. all your inner divine self. And I believe that it's, God lives within each one of us and God is energy. And those are the energy cords that that's how we're tied to. I mean, we've all got multiple energy cords and that's one of them. Yeah. So we all want the same thing. We all just want to be, you know, loved and seen and heard. Um, and so now is the time to have this awakening. I know that I was, my soul chose this body, this, this lifetime to do a particular job. And that's part of what this video is all about. It's, and it's getting the work done. Um, yeah. It hasn't been easy. It took me, I just, you know, shared with a friend last night you know, I spoke at Walk the Talk last year and that took me probably two or three years to be comfortable with sharing my personal story. Yeah. And, and it's like, I found my voice last year and now I'm using my voice this year. And there are certain people that are like, where did you come from? Because you were not this person before. Actually, I've always been that person. I just finally decided to take the mask off and use my voice. And if you don't like it, okay. Like, yeah no skin off my nose. So, yeah, we all have different masks. I had one to always be funny. And I, I created that as a kid in order to feel comfortable and fit in, um, is the bottom line. So, you know, the people who knew me in high school and college in those years, they then look at me now and they're kind of like, mm, not the same person. Well, I am. I just don't have the, the fakeness, whatever you yeah. want around. So, yeah. So, and it's interesting for me because I'm like really looking and thinking like, okay, what, what mask do I wear? And that's like really been uncovering, you know, for me. And I'm like, one of the ones is like, I, I'm, you know, a little bit shyer and I don't like to speak up and that's, but it's like funny. Cause like, that's, I'm like that most of the time, but then if you get to know me, I'm really not like that, you know? So it's like, for me, just taking it off and even like doing like this with you, like that's part of me taking it off and be like, okay, well, let's, let's do it. You're essentially creating trust with those people when you take off the mask and saying, yeah, I, I, I'm creating this trust between us that yeah. you know, even if you judge me, that judgment is all about you and has nothing to do with me. Exactly. Exactly. So exactly. For me, um, if people haven't figured it out by now, makeup is my thing. It's a part of my art. I love it. Um, and I change it frequently. Be and part of that is because of my um, growing. And again, it's like, okay, so what is this face supposed to look like now? You know, or get to look like now? Yeah. Um, and, you know, quarantine hair. And I look at it as, guess what? I can now go in and I have an appointment set up to go in at the end of this month. And this is her art. She can do whatever she wants, you know, within mm -hmm. reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so worried about the collar as I am the cut. I'm just, then, you know, it's, again, it's all in how you look at it. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and that's what I encourage people to do during this time. And I feel like the retrogrades are encouraging us to do that too. Like you can look, you can look at this as oh God, this is going to suck. And I, I hate the memes on, on social media. Hate is such a strong word. And that's how I feel on social media. That is like, screw you to 2020. Well, guess what? If that's how you feel, that's how the rest of your 2020 is going to go. Yeah. Say, Hey, I'm really happy that you're here to help me. 
because this isn't happening to you guys. This is happening for everybody. Although I do like the ones that are like, can we start the next season of 2020? Because that's kind of like how I feel like, okay, I'm ready. Like, this has been fun, but I'm ready for the next season to start. And guess what? Spirit isn't ready yet. <laughs> no, I'm putting your butt in time out and play on my terms. So, and then, so by the way, for those of you who know me personally, I've told you I won't wear a mask. I have, I have issues about it. Um, uh, somebody very close to me, I saw what they posted and I was like, only him and one other person could get me to wear a mask. And, and, and so I bought a mask from somebody here locally and, and to that, I will play in the 3d realm. Um, and if that's something y'all want to hear about on a later video, I'd love to share it with you. My thoughts and feelings about the pandemic, about what COVID really is. I'm not saying that it's not real, it is. And that's a whole, again, it probably would go into your fifth dimensional conversation. And I would, yeah, let's just like save it. Like, well, let's, uh, if anybody has anything else they wanna hear about, like I have a couple ideas, um, but if there's anything specific that you wanna like talk about or have questions to, like, let's, let's talk about it. I, yeah, we can riff on that later. So, oh my gosh, I don't even know how long we've been talking. <laughs> I know, me neither. <laughs> All right, so thank you, because this is Jean's idea. So thank you. Um, yeah. Really appreciate it. Thank you for joining. And I guess just stay tuned, because we don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Bye. Bye.